these teams have a prime opportunity for a crucial ranked win tonight. Not only is this a top 15 matchup, but both Oregon and Minnesota are fighting to get a top 16 seed for the NCAA tournament to host the first two rounds. If the season ended right now, Oregon is in, but Minnesota's on the outside looking in. This is a massive opportunity for Minnesota to get a win. Take a look at our starting lineup, starting with Minnesota. Callie Engeman working her way into the starting lineup, an experienced grad student middle blocker to go alongside Phoebe Awalea, leading the Big Ten in conference play and blocks per game. And Oregon with their libero, Daly McClellan, out for a second straight match. They are moving again to a 6-2 like they did against Nebraska. Oregon hasn't had too much time to practice it. Against Nebraska was the first time they debuted it. They have to come out a lot stronger and a little bit more consistent than they did against Nebraska the other night. These teams have met 11 times. Eight of those have gone at least four sets. Five of them were five setters. So buckle up for this one here at the PAV in this top 15 matchup. So on this one's got five sets written all over it. I can't wait. Calling it right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling it, okay. <laughs> all right, here we go. You're on record now, we'll see. <laughs> Both these teams, especially Hungry Emily 2, coming off the wrong side of sweeps as Minnesota starts things off with a service error by Melanie Schaffmaster. Service pressure is going to be big for both sides. Minnesota is a very tough serving team. That means Oregon has to lock in and serve receive. Oregon, on the other hand, they have to find a way to knock Minnesota out of system because the Gophers do struggle passing time to time. They serve McKenna Wooker. Taps it over and gets the kill from passing to attacking successful for the Gophers. Watch the Gophers to be a little bit more shoddy and tippy tonight, throwing in off speeds more often than they normally would because Oregon is such a big blocking presence up front. Both these teams tremendous at the net, third and fourth and blocks per set. Minnesota in conference play right up there with uh, the size of Wisconsin in terms of their block against conference opponents. Kalabiak with the bump set. Julia Hansen, a recent Big Ten player of the week. An opportunity for the Ducks with the free ball. Noemi Glover still keeping it up. And then terminated right up the middle by Onia Faber. You win matches in transition. This was Oregon's perfect opportunity to get the middle going in a broken play situation, but that's what makes their middle so good, especially Oni Afebu, number 13 in yellow. She is so good at getting off the net. Someone who redshirted last year coming up from the mid-majors as Minnesota surrenders another ace. They allowed 13 in their sweep against Washington. Head coach of Oregon, Matt Omer, in his fourth season. Back-to-back -back elite eights for this team. Has a lot of familiarity going up against Keegan Cook when they faced each other as head coaches of the Ducks and the Washington Huskies. Willie Hansen steps into it and fires. Shaftmaster back set looking for Lydia Grote. From the back row, Oabete. Hansen going right through the block. And Mimi Collier slicing it cross court. Mimi Collier is so fun to watch because she makes plays like this, slicing it inside, even the best blockers up against her. She has the ability to turn that right thumb down and hit a sharp shot in front of the 10-foot line. She had 52 attempts in a three-set match against Nebraska. And Something with the 6-2, but also that security blanket as well as Julia Hansen will misfire another point for Oregon. For context on those 52 attempts, over two times the next player. Keegan Cook mentioned his familiarity with Matt Omer, who's in his eighth season with Oregon as we step aside in this top 15 matchup. Oregon leading coaches have great things to say about each other. Matt Omer and Keegan Cook. Cook with the upper hand now in their 12th head-to-head -head matchup going back to the Pac-12 days, but very familiar with each other's systems, philosophies as well. Rhodes, big rip and a kill for Minnesota that they needed after a 4 nothing Oregon run. That's a huge answer for the Gophers right out of that timeout. Good timeout taken by Keegan Cook just to reset the team. You can't let the opponent go on a run early because that sets the tone for the match. Zaina Palabiak back to serve for Minnesota. Targeting Obobete. Lover 
will fire. Oregon right out of the gates is doing a really nice job distributing their offense with balance, meaning they're getting everyone involved, and those hitters are doing a really good job being available for their setter at all times. That's something that's defined this Oregon team throughout this season is just the plethora of attackers they do have. There are just multiple options every time in this 6-2 especially. This is something that's been new to this Oregon team just in the last few days. Against Nebraska, that was the first time we saw the 6-2 debut. And now we'll see this new combination come in with Gregoire and Kuroshai. Kuroshai over to Collier. The go-to, but the pancake by Melanie Schaffmaster. Too long there by Grote and a point to Oregon despite the defensive efforts. Minnesota just handing Oregon points right now. The attackers, especially at the pins, are trying to do too much and put it on the end line. At the end of the day, the ball has to stay in the court. Roberta Purushai serving in the 6-2 system without their defensive specialist in libero. Daly McClellan making her, missing her second straight match. Another kill for Oregon. They are on fire here, Collier with the swing. One massive benefit of a 6-2 is you always have three attackers front court because your setter is always in the back row. So even in out of system situations, you kind of have two options at all times, one in the left pin and one in the right pin. Seven to one run. Hanson right into that formidable block by Oregon. Hanson gets it right back and terminates. Julia Hansen has exploded this season. She has done such a great job knowing that if she's going to get this ball, she might have two, even three blockers in front of her, but she is never afraid to take a rip. When she was the Big Ten Player of the Week, October 28th, had 5.3 kills per set in two wins. Just an outstanding season, and especially stressed for the two. Shaftmaster goes right back to Hansen. And she is the hot hand to try and crawl back into this first set. Hansen has been so impressive, really embracing this role as an attacker, becoming the go-to, really, for this Minnesota squad. Not afraid of any block in front of her, even one of the best in Oregon. Cook says, I want to give her the credit, not just me, for the way that she has seized having this kind of pressure on her shoulders, taking the most swings, leaving this team in front as well. Traverti tapping it over. Hansen. Goes into the block or into the net rather that time. A point to the Ducks. Good idea from Hansen on that ball. The only shot that she had was to rip it cross court, but you still have to swing high, even when, especially when you're off the net. Her second air has two kills, hitting zero at this point. Collier at the service lot. Minnesota out of system, but flying in Purishai with the pick. Into the block, another kill for the Ducks, being aggressive. Oregon's being very aggressive, up against a good Minnesota block up front. Now with Callie Engman in, a middle blocker that hasn't had too much playing time, she's gonna have to know that this offense is very balanced and she has to make very disciplined moves and get those hands over fast. That swing by the redshirt freshman, Sophie Gregoire. Hanson tipping it over the block, and that works to perfection. Much better adjustment on the outside. The last swing that Hansen had went out of bounds. This time taking a little bit off of it, putting it right over the big block in front of her. She's someone who has worked so much in the offseason and improving this year. Going into big blocks, knowing what you're bound to face in the Big Ten, Oregon, certainly one of those teams with their prowess there. Oh, a big day. Hammers it. Looker tries to push it over and a point to Oregon. More great defense at the net with Gregoire. Defense happening on both sides for Minnesota. It's been in the backcourt. Check out this dig from Palaviak, getting under it just in time. Then it's the front court defense of Oregon to put it right down. It's a defensive battle already. I think we would have known that going in. It's not just oh, the yeah. blocks and digs, but just the aggression philosophy of both of these teams. Shaftmaster tried to keep that in play, but a point to the Ducks as they continue to roll here in set one. With how good of a backcourt defensive core that Minnesota has, Oregon knows that they're going to win this match by swinging hard. We're not seeing a ton of tips on their side, and it's paying off so, to run an efficient offense. And again, you think about those 13 aces coming in three sets as well. That has to be cleaned up for this Minnesota team. And Coach Cook, Emily, said 
It's one of those, you look at the box score yeah. and just scratch your head. You can't wrap your head around how that result happens. And this is why coaches always talk about it coming down to serve and pass. When you get aced 13 times, when you make 11 service errors, that's nearly a set in itself. Hey, it's not a cliche. No. <laughs> it can rear its ugly head anytime. Kind of looker with the swing. the block perfectly and Oregon continues its efficiency. They have no attack air in this set. This is a massive flip from what we saw how they started out against Nebraska. They're in this 6-2 system, meaning they always have two setters coming in. Sometimes that provides a little bit of inconsistency out on the court. This is a much better showing for the Ducks. Coach Ulmer said, of course, we institute this new system, have to face Nebraska of all teams, but it looks like they're really clicking in this system at the moment. On the slide, Phoebe Awalea, her first win. Up the middle, Ofebu emphatically crushes it to the floor. Oni Ofebu is so dynamic when she's up there. The set doesn't have to be perfect, but watch her adjust her arm swing mid-air because the set isn't exactly where her arm wanted it. Such a dynamic and athletic player. Hit 182 against Nebraska. Excellent against UCLA a couple matches ago. For the back row, a blast from Hansen and an opportunity for the Gophers. Walker into the block and the Ducks are fired up. They have silenced this sellout crowd. Not only can Afebu put the ball down on offense, but defensively, if you want to test her out, you better hit it as hard as you can or hit the seams because she's going to block you every time. Five to one run for Oregon. Another back row blast, and again into the block. Oregon providing no seams at the net. So early on, Minnesota's tested out the block a few times, and what they've found is that ball is coming back at them even quicker than they're attacking it. Minnesota now has to make the adjustment, go for the edges of the block or fingertips if you don't have a seam, because right into it isn't going to work. I mean, these are comebackers we're talking about with the speed you can see on the baseball diamond this Walker is able to get it to fall. That's a much better adjustment on the attack, going with the tip rather than that hard shot, just putting it right in the seam. Is it going to take some creativity from Minnesota here? Every team that plays Oregon, it takes creativity to win. Because that block is so good, you have to change the way you run your offense somewhat. Fabu will take your breath away with that sweat. Onia Fabu having herself a day already four for four, leading Oregon in kills. Those are numbers that you not you don't normally see from a middle attacker. What that tells you is how good Oregon's passing and transition has been in a really impressive set from Kristen Klein as well. Well, Bette at the service line. Shaftmaster, a tight set. It's going to be a point to Minnesota. Minnesota hitting zero in this first set compared to Oregon 381. But they have a great server right here at the line. And the redshirt freshman, Alex Osavito. Someone capable of igniting a run for this team. Klein, the bump set looks to Collier. Roach has the charge in awkwardly, and Oregon comes away with the point. And that's just a mishandled play on Minnesota's side. Palabia coming in to make that second play. Try to get the ball up to her right side, just way too tight. Especially coming off a loss on their home court. Minnesota unsteady here, down by 10 at set number one. You see the blocks there, 4 nothing. Hansen going over the block right there, though, is Klein. Lover, the pancake by Palabia. Line goes right back to Glover. Kept in play by Shaftmaster. Always capable of big defensive plays. Collier off the block, and Minnesota will pick up that point. Two missed opportunities for Oregon. Two easy plays, free balls on their side. Those are the plays that you have to capitalize on. Put right on the money and put down right away. Lobby, it gets it in play. Line up the middle to Verdi with the soft touch. Hansen unleashes the heat for the kill. 
When there's a seam in the block, Minnesota's doing a really great job exploiting that on the outside. Watch how big the seam is for Hansen to attack. It's a decent pass, it holds the middle, and all of a sudden it's going right down in the seam. No one's gonna get that. Hansen already with 16 swings in this first set alone. Collier puts away the soft shot. What a smart decision from Collier on the outside. This is one of the best off speeds that you can have as a left side attacker. Just right over that block into the middle of the court. Because it's anyone's game at that point in the back row on the other side. One of two ducks along with Ofebu on the ABCA player of the year watch list. Outstanding in her first year in the Big Ten. Shaftmaster looking to gross. And she's denied Oregon all over the net. This is why Oregon's block is so tough because it's not just their middles up front, it's all around that front line. Anybody can make a massive play at a big time and this time it's Collier putting it right down. Collier, six foot three, outside, make those kind of plays. Groats has a tap right back and Oregon continues its dominance. Oregon is doing such a great job up at the net, being disciplined in their block. Watch how far these hands get over the net. They know exactly where it's going. A great finish there by Neil. Shaftmaster Hansen picking up the kill badly needed for Minnesota. Oregon inching toward set, uh, match point. Set point. Now grow to serve for what has been a challenging set for the Gophers. to that Minnesota block. Excellent effort by Palabiak, but the Ducks again get the point. A really good up from Palabiak on Minnesota's side. Just kind of gets in her own way there for her other teammates to make the point. Watch this chase down, number 12 in white. Just an incredible left-handed up, but the ball comes right back on top of her. You could tell she was trying hard. How can I get out of the way yeah. from my teammates? Nothing she could do. That's the worst. <laughs> Speaking from experience. Yeah. Shy chases it down. Shaftmaster looking for Engaman on the slide. And kept up by Oregon's defense. They are flying around the court in set one. Right back to Engaman. And that is perfection for this Minnesota offense. This was the reason Kelly Engman earned a spot on the starting lineup because of how good this slide attack is. She is so good running behind the setter on these quicks. Didn't land the first one, but then gets a second try at it and a phenomenal finish this time from 16 in black. Oregon picks up another 23 to 12. Now their lead, and it has felt just robotic the way they have been able to pick up points in this set. Oregon's been on top of it in every aspect of the game. Defensively, they're already up to 16 digs, six blocks, and then offensively, hitting over 300. Can't ask for much better. No. Shaftmaster with the dump. Shaftmaster has to continue to establish herself as a threat up front. She's a big physical presence up there. If that ball is tight, Oregon has to expect her to go up and take it over. She's six foot three. She's one of the most offensive-minded setters in the Big Ten, too, and I think a good spot for her right now. Lauren Crowell off the bench. Up the middle, Ofebu. That has been unstoppable. Emily, five of five. She's been outstanding, and the pass has been even better. Michelle Oabete has been getting targeted and service -y. She has handled it near perfectly every single time. That allows the middles to get involved for her team. You're right. Oabete has looked unfazed and in, in service -y. That was one of the biggest things in this 6-2, especially in two passer rotations, where she knows she's getting targeted, but can she handle it? And what we've seen, she absolutely can. Another player like Ofebu coming up from the mid-major level and excelling here under Matt Olmer. Obete. Looker right into that block. Morgan's block just been the entire story here throughout this first set, already up to nearly seven on the day. Shaftmaster 
trying to lead a run here for Minnesota. Oregon with its second set point. And Oregon will take set number one, putting on a clinic in multiple ways on the road in a top 15 matchup. Oregon leading it. One nothing here at the PAV. Minnesota and Oregon so strong defensively, but it scores, which is essentially most of that first set. Minnesota has to come out with some new energy, make those offensive adjustments, and then on the aspect of defense as well, because Oregon's offense went off, hit nearly 350. They have to find a way to neutralize that balance. That means Minnesota has to serve a little bit tougher to take away that balance that Oregon has because they're passing lights out. And Emily, as we were going to the break, I saw Minnesota gather up together and huddle up, and I can just assume those conversations about just resetting and put yeah. that set behind them. Yeah, it, it's gotta be a full reset mindset right now. You have to go out completely clean slate, say, hey, let's go win the next three. Doesn't matter what happened during set one. We have to find a way to just improve. Oregon had just two attack errors. As Emily mentioned, hit 344 in set number one to do that on the road. And after they lost to Nebraska on their home court, clearly a mission and statement made so far. Up the middle, Alalea. And Oregon continues to play it. Again, Alalea up the middle. Collier absorbing the heat, Palabiak. Ofebu almost with the deny. And then Ofebu finds the floor. Offense and defense for Ofebu. Defense working hard on both sides just to keep the ball alive. Three balls going left and right. Minnesota has a scramble play, finds a way to get it over. But if you give Oregon a free ball nine times out of 10, it's going down because they have that player right there who's been lights out. Also on that player of the year watch list from the AVCA. Collier into the Minnesota block. That what we expected in this matchup. That's also the momentum that Minnesota needed. Nothing gets your team hyped up quite like a block does. This was read so well by Awalea, and those hands just stifling at the net. Awalea is leading the Big Ten in blocks per set, 1.78 against conference opponents. She has been dominant this season up front. What makes that number crazy, too, is normally your numbers go down in conference play because the Big Ten is so good as Oregon puts that one down, but her numbers have gone up. She had a stretch where she was out blocking teams, where she had incredible dominance. And you see her numbers there versus the non-conference. You're right, that's quite a difference. It's a massive difference. And again, I mean, the, the Big Ten is so difficult. It's the best volleyball conference in the nation. Normally, everyone's numbers, for the most part, go down. But she's just elevating her game. Over six-match stretch, had 51 blocks earlier this season. Minnesota coming back. Firing after a set one loss. The biggest difference that Minnesota needs to have in the second set is swinging with power and swinging high. This was a perfect example of Julia Hansen in an out of system situation. Not a good set. All she did was swing high for fingertips. Hansen six kills, leading Minnesota, followed by Wooker with three. Back time in ace for Minnesota. That ball was served perfectly by Lydia Groh in the backcourt, dropping it right in front of the passer. It's so difficult when you have these types of serves that just catch the air pocket. Barely any movement on that at all, and jumps right in front of you. That time is targeting Owabete. First lead for Minnesota of this match. She does it again. Collier got the touch. Another really smart decision, this time on Oregon's side, of if you do have a big block in front of you, normally in out-of-system situations, meaning the setter is on the move, the side knows exactly where the ball is going outside. You just have to swing high against it to get the point. Collier, 16 swings, six kills, hitting 250. Hershey has that one drop off the table. Hansen with fire through the block. Really great adjustments on Minnesota's side. Julie Hansen is doing a much better job, not barreling it right inside the seam, but really going for fingertips, going for the edges of the block, and it's working out. Minnesota leading by one. Much better response so far. 
Hansen serving right now has seven of her team's 13 kills in this match. Great look, beautiful offense by Oregon. Greg Walk with the kill. Getting a little bit crafty in the way they're running this offense as well because they're not normally in a 6-2, meaning they don't normally always have three hitters up front. They'll still run that right side in front on a two ball through the middle and have the middle go back on a slide behind the setter. Not looking like this is their second match no. playing a 6-2 and against the ring team. Looker with the termination. The message had to be clear from Keegan Cook in that huddle. Hey guys, we're getting blocked off the court. We have to make some offensive adjustments. This is a much better turnout right now for Minnesota, making that adjustment to swing high. In the first set, Oregon in multiple ways was the aggressor. Minnesota now looking like they're taking that mantle. And this is what we've seen from Minnesota all season long. This is the kind of play that has allowed them two top 15 wins already. Greg Waugh has come in with a couple big kills. She's got four on five swings. Norgan's gonna need to have her in that offense and be a, a presence up there as well. She's just not in there to take up space. She's in there to get some kills. Someone who's come up big as a reserve for this team. Plenty of depth for Oregon this year. Shaftmaster going to Wooker. She's been the hot hand in set number two with her fifth kill. Both Wooker and Hanson are doing a really great job going after that 1-6 seam, meeting between right back and middle back, targeting that on the outside of the block. It's been Hanson in Rooker with 12 kills of Minnesota's 15 overall. Really depending on those pins. Shaftmaster gets it into play. And some miscommunication from the Ducks. Throws into the block. Aggressively. That was a difficult ball, ball for Lydia Grote to get through because the block was right there waiting on it. Just not a good enough finish right there from Afebu. Those hands have to be up quicker. Before that swing, Grote had four airs on eight swings, but she snapped right back into it with a strong swing. Speaking of strong swings, I'm a better. I love watching Noah Bete on the outside. She's only 5'10", but she jumps through the gym. And the attack point is pretty much the exact same as the blockers in front of her who might have three, four, five inches on her. Check out how high she gets on some of these, especially going up against Lydia Grote, who's got four inches on her, going we're, over her. I think we're all rooting for those undersized oh pins. Oh, gosh, yeah. 100%. Grote denied by the Oregon block. Oregon's block is a wall up front, especially when the other team is out of system. Watch them bring their outside blocker in to help on a triple block because the outside is the only one that can get the ball in this situation. That provides even more space for the attacker to hit through. Really nowhere for Grote to go right there with that triple block. Free ball for Oregon. Lover drills it. When Oregon gets a free ball, their offense is lightning fast. Even the pass to get on the setter's head is not very high, so the blockers on the other side have to read a fast offense, see what's happening right away. Oftentimes, you see that seam, and the hitters are going right their way. Oregon taking back the lead here in set two, and add another to it with an ace. Oregon continuing the service pressure on Minnesota, and this is where Minnesota... So they've lost four straight, but... We go back to the 2018 Sweet 16, Oregon winning in four sets. That second set, Emily, 41 to 39. Veronica Stone had 20 kills, hit 500. You have Stephanie Samady with 17 kills, 24 digs as well. An absolute epic matchup. Point going to Oregon after that timeout. An early timeout taken again by Minnesota, finding ways to try to stop Oregon serve receive, or service rather, because Minnesota serve receive can really struggle, and we're seeing it right now. Kristen Klein has been on target, making things tough for Minnesota. Klein looks to Olabete, and kept up by Shaftmaster. For the pack roll Collier taking some heat up. And that works for another Oregon kill. Nearly a broken play on Oregon's side. This set way too low for Collier to get, but 
Minnesota working real hard to try to keep these balls in play. Check out this play from Wooker, just throws a hand on it to get it over and nearly a miss set on Oregon side, but Collier finds something to do with it. Klein igniting this run for the Ducks. Roach, big swing and a big dig by Collier. Minnesota not able to get it up and with the touch, it's a point for Oregon. What a smart shot from Obete on the outside. It's a really fast set. The block didn't necessarily have time to get there, but she also didn't have time to adjust her swing, so she just went right for fingertips to send it off. Really high IQ play. Obete, nine airless swings has three kills. Right up the middle, how a layup coming up with a big kill for Minnesota. When Minnesota gets a good pass, it's really tough to stop their offense because Awalea and whoever the other middle is, is normally very good offensively. It's just a question of whether Minnesota can get a good enough pass to run them. They've been heavily dependent, especially in this match, on those pins. Looking for that versatility. Up the middle again, Ofebu, seven of seven. It's a different story on Oregon's side because their passing is so good. They're in system at a high clip that allows all options on offense. And when you're in a 6-2, you always have three up front. It's really stressing out Minnesota's defense. Robete at the service line. Hansen has that tapped back. Glover. Firepower on display for the Ducks and Glover. Just sheer athleticism from Kristen Klein as well. This ball was so tight on the pass, but Klein turned her shoulders facing the net so she could make the side set all the way out to Glover to put it down. Gross. Crushes it. Meanwhile, over on the bench, as McKenna Wooker was talking with the trainer. I'll keep an eye out if we see her on the court again here. Wooker has been in and out of the lineup this season, dealing with injury on and off, still on a day-to-day -day schedule, said Keegan Cook. It's been a lot of trying to just manage her load, thinking long-term for this season for a Minnesota team that wants to go deep in the tournament, too. Yeah, I mean, the volleyball season's so long, too. You have to be so smart about you know, whether you're playing a player or not and how good they feel because you don't want to burn them out come December when you really need them. Looker third on this team in kills. Behind Grote and Hansen. Count that as another ace for the Oregon Ducks who have continued to roll in every facet of this game. A timeout call. Minnesota needs better communication on that back line because that's a play that if you have the other players telling her it's out, normally you get out of the way in time. Oregon on a long run, up seven in set two. Two programs excelling their first season in the Big Ten. You look at the performances this season from superstars, Ruby Collier and Dylan Gabriel, two leading their teams to outstanding seasons so far. Oregon, of course, with college football playoff aspirations and going deep in the expanded 12 teams. And Emily, I enjoyed seeing Sabrina Unescu on the Big Ten tailgate today. She said, my pick, Ducks by a million. Of course, you know, you just gotta. No bigger Duck ambassador, I think, than yeah. the recent WNBA champion. Oh, 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 Hansen. To that block. Minnesota's answered really well out of these timeouts. Keegan Cook has done a really great job identifying when the team just needs a breakout on the court and calling it early enough to where Oregon can't go on too long of a run, and they're siding out quickly. And that's something, too, Emily, in set two, where you can read those things mm -hmm. about your team when you have that experience and have been together in those tough moments. An ace for Minnesota. Trying to crawl back into this one. Lydia Grote going off at the service line again, her second ace of the night, doing it in a way where she's dropping it right in the seams of the passers, doing a really nice job from the end line. This is great to see from Grote too, whose offense hasn't been efficient today, but trying to make an impact in different ways. Line chases it down, pushed over, then back. Hansen pushes it into the block, showing the creativity needed 
against the Oregon Bluff. Minnesota's gonna need a lot more of that creativity offensively. It can't always just be hard swing, hard swing. They have to know that in out of system situations, they've got a big block up there. Just be smart with it and go off the fingertips just like that. Oregon had six blocks in set number one, just one here in the second set. Growth though, the run will end as she goes into the nets. It was a three nothing scoring run for the Gophers. So Roberta Purishai back to serve for Oregon. Trying to go up two sets to nothing on the road against a top 15 team. Shaftmaster looking for that dump, well read by the Ducks. And then the touch, giving them the kill. So oftentimes we talk about bettering the ball. If it's not a good pass, okay, make a better set out of it. If it's not a good set, make a good attack off it. This was a perfect example. Not a very good set, but Collier knew exactly what to do with it to better that ball. I'm wondering how many times you heard that from coaches in your life. So often, so often. It sounded like it, right? I mean, you know, when the pass isn't good, oftentimes as a libero, which is my position, you have to find a way to just put up a good second ball. And then normally the second ball might not be perfect, so now that attacker has to go up and make the adjustments. Hansen now up to 10 kills for Minnesota, and they're within five. And she'll go back to serve. Collier has that tipped. Savito into the action with Rooker still on the bench. She gets another swing into the Oregon block. Chased down by Feebolt, and she gets there. The former duck in Minnesota keep this point alive. And then the termination with the crowd getting into it. But no, Minnesota is given that point, igniting this pavilion crowd. Kate Thiebaud running after this, looking like Usain Bolt back there. Watch her pump her arms. She gets all the way from the front of the court to that back line, nearly taking out some people in the stands. Original call. This last out. play. Point Minnesota. That's it. Oregon is challenging, and the ball was in. I think everyone was surprised when the line judge called that ball out. I think seeing it live, it definitely looked in. But man, that hustle from Thibault just running back there. You're right, she had no fear crashing into <laughs> people in the stands. That's what you want to see, especially from your littles. Like, they don't have that many times where they get to make those explosive high-level plays. Good way to just get momentum on Minnesota's side, whether or not they get this point. And based on that look, clearly it. After review, the ball is in. Point will go to Oregon. Oregon retains their challenge. So successful challenge for Matt Ulmer and the Ducks. You can still feel a lot of energy in this building and with Minnesota, but credit to Oregon for the response. You see that kind of play. You hear this environment and then the termination at the end of it. And it's so difficult when you're coming as an opposing team into these kind of environments. You have to kind of check your emotions right at the beginning of the match to make sure you're good. Sophie Gregoire has just taken confident swings throughout this match. Morgan, meanwhile, in the second set, 13 kills on 22 swings, just one attack error, hitting 545. Row tipped over by Hansen right there for a shot. And Gregoire again has come up with another kill for the Ducks. The difference in set two has been Oregon's offense has been lights out. They're hitting over 550. Minnesota's defense just doesn't have an answer. Offensively, though, they're hitting over 300. So the front court for Minnesota doing their job. That block, though, has to make a difference. That just sailing out for Collier. But talking about defense, this is a Minnesota team that wants to make that their identity. They're second in the Big Ten in digs per set. Seems like they really embrace that role, but it's just not happening here. Well, uh, the biggest reason has been the block. Minnesota only has one right now through nearly two sets. Normally, this is a team that is averaging three blocks a set. Up near Wisconsin in terms of blocks per set in Big Ten play. That's saying a lot. Collier ripping it out of the back row. Oh, 
Bete into the Minnesota block, and we'll play on. Collier again pushes it over, and it will go to Minnesota, making it a five-point game. Collier had the right idea on that tip, trying to take out that off blocker. It's one of the only shots that she had, just going a little bit wide with it. Just a bit. Close. Skylar Gray, a serving specialist in, has that seal too long. Those are the plays that you just can't have as you're trying to claw your way back in the set again to top 15 team. You have to play as error free as possible. In the red zone too. In the red zone now for Oregon, meaning from point 20 on. 21-15 is the Ducks lead. They have stayed calm and composed here in the second set. Acevedo picks up the kill for the Gophers. And two Ducks back there just caught looking at it. But again, that's what happens when you have players checking in that don't normally see the court. Gamash and Collier right here, middle back and left back, just caught looking at each other. Normally, you have a libero out there who's going to take it in Mackenzie Morris. Acevedo was a member of this Oregon Ducks team, redshirted last year, came out of Idaho. Now her first season in Minnesota. Bete. Acevedo is denied by a brick wall. This is the first set that Acevedo has taken swings in, but we keep seeing her test out the block time and time again. She played against these players, and now she's realizing how big this block is in real time. She has to make that offensive adjustment and swing higher. Right into it is not working. Kristen Klein back to serve, so solid. Has an ace today, but has done a great job of getting Minnesota out of sorts. Oh, just like that. Glover stepping into it for the Ducks. Bette testing that Minnesota block as well. Back row flying in is Collier, but that seals too long point. To the Gophers. Maybe Collier is getting a lot of good looks, just not managing those swings really well. If the set isn't perfect, you have to find a way to adjust your arm swing mid-air and keep that ball in play. She's got eight kills in this one so far, but hitting 167. Someone hitting well, Ofebu. Now eight of eight for this Oregon offense. I mean, she's perfect tonight. She's doing an incredible job offensively, eight for eight. Five Blocks already so far. She came to play in a top 15 matchup. Rhodes gets it over. Fabu has that kept up. First time she hasn't been terminal. Hanson off the block and a point to Minnesota, scratching and clawing here late in set two. Minnesota has to keep swinging. They're not going to win this set on tips. These hitters up front have to stay aggressive, just like this swing from Julia Hansen. Glover, a lot of strength, but Minnesota's block right there for the rejection. The hard swing taken by Glover, but even coming back faster is Eggman up front. Showing off her versatility to be the top attacker on this ring to Minnesota team. The lobby got the service line. Oh, Febu, there's been no answer for her swings. She has been absolutely outstanding and both setters are doing a really good job getting her going in different situations. That time in serve receive, but they're doing a really nice job in transition as well, getting the middles involved. She is perfect no longer, but I think she'll settle for being 9 of 10 at this point. <laughs> Hansen into the block. Goes at it once more and picks up the kill. Those are the plays that Oregon's block has to make when they know exactly where the ball is going. Your hands have to be in the perfect position, but kudos to Hansen for just swinging away at it. And in a broken play, nonetheless. Lydia Groats, one of the best at the service line for this Minnesota team. Hansen 
Robinson fearlessly with strength over the net, but kept up. Shaft Master looking for Engelman on the slide. It will fall, and Oregon will take a 2-0 lead in Minneapolis. Oregon firing on all cylinders right now. Offense hitting over 300. The block has been lights out. They have nine through just, which is very low. Two wins against top 25 teams, two wins against RPI top 50 teams. All their losses are good, but they still need one or two more big wins to solidify themselves in the NCAA tournament. But Regardless of seeding, this Minnesota team has the offensive weapons and the high defensive caliber to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. I think back to Louisville in 2019. They were an unseeded team, beat number two Texas in the regional semifinals to get all the way to the regional finals. So, yes, seeding matters, but at the end of the day, it's how you do in December. I think back to what Melanie Shaftmaster said recently, where she said last year we learned when we had to go to Creighton, a tough team and a tough place to play, that just because we're Minnesota, we're not guaranteed to host at home and be one of those top 14, excuse me, 16 teams. We really have to earn it, so there is that sense of urgency this season. I mean, it's nothing better than having home court advantage for two matches that can make or break your season right there. We talked with head coach Matt Ulmer about it, too, in their regionals last year up at Madison. It was a tough environment. They faced Wisconsin in that regional final, the basketball equivalent to the Elite Eight, and it was one of the loudest atmospheres that he had ever been a part of. Omar also telling us, we're not really thinking about that right now. Yeah. You can crunch the numbers behind the scenes and see how things might work out, but just worried about that next match. Yeah, and look, the players on the court, they're not thinking about what this means to RPI and all of that. It's great for us to talk about, and it's what this match means, but the players aren't thinking about it. Alex Acevedo in ace for Minnesota to start off this desperate third set. Minnesota needs a lot more service pressure here in the third set. Oregon did a really nice job running a balanced offense through the first two, so Minnesota has to knock them out of system, and that starts on the end line. Acevedo back to back. She has relished this role at the service line. Her first full season of college volleyball. This is huge for Acevedo coming in. The Oregon transfer, she is very familiar with all of these players on Oregon's side and picking apart that serve received. <laughs> Fabu tipping it over. The back row, Acevedo on the attack, and she has her Gophers fired up. All of a sudden, Minnesota's got a spark plug, and that is Alex Acevedo not only getting the aces from the end line, Shaftmaster getting her going in the backcourt offensively. She had some big matches earlier this season, especially when McKenna Wooker has been out. We have not seen her in quite some time. Went to the bench in the second set as we're dealing with injury throughout the year as Minnesota racks up another kill to go up 4 nothing, and Acevedo keying it at the service line. Time out. To Oregon, the crowd swelling here. Minnesota 4 0 run to start the fourth, third set, and Alex Acevedo is a massive reason why. She put up an ace, then another ace, and then in the backcourt. Normally, we don't see her hit from back here. Jack Master gets her going, and she puts it down. This has been the difference so far for Minnesota in the third. Two kills, two service aces for Minnesota, both of those by Acevedo. And Emily, the people need to know the pun you just came up with while we were in break. Ace of Vito. Maybe the first one to ever think of that. Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> Oregon strikes back just what they need after a timeout. That's a good answer from the Ducks right out of that timeout, nailing the pass right away, finding ways to get out of it. Good timeout taken from Matt Ulmer, not letting Minnesota go too deep. Oh, Abete at the service line for the Ducks. Up two sets to nothing on the road in a top 15 matchup. Collier, a lot of heat on that swing. Collier putting everything she had into that one. You can see the frustration on her face during that swing, just trying to rack up points for this Oregon team that had that 0-4 deficit to start. So balanced for Oregon. Oh, Fabu, nine kills. Collier, nine kills. Gregoire with six herself, and it continues down the line. So many options. And the block clicking again. Oregon's block has been the difference. They had nine blocks through the first two sets. Those are insane numbers. Minnesota needs to do a better job of covering. Watch this attack. Only two players are really into help. All five players that aren't attacking that ball need to be into cover.
Minnesota is used to being on that opposite end where they are consistently and significantly out blocking teams like they did against Washington. And so it's kind of surprising that they look surprised every time the ball comes back at them. Melissa Minity coming off the bench this time. And then the block for Minnesota responds. The block for Minnesota needs to continue to step up. Oregon has been hitting well over 300 for the first two sets. Minnesota's block was non-existent through the first two. They need a little bit more of that momentum and defensive prowess up there. We've talked about it, but worth repeating, Emily, that Minnesota is an excellent blocking team. They're not used to having this kind of disparity right there. That play, that's what we're used to seeing I mean, from the Gophers. Minnesota averaging about three blocks a set right now. They have three total blocks through two. Elise McGee, serving specialist in for Minnesota. Hanson, a big grip, still makes it over. Alea has that denied. Hanson, triple block, and still registers the kill. That's a gutsy swing up front from Julia Hanson. With three blockers in front of her, she still attacks it. Those hands weren't pressed over enough on Oregon's side. That allows her to tool it out of bounds. <laughs> McGee and ace, Minnesota. Solid from the service line in set three, and they lead by four. Minnesota's third ace of just this set. Morgan has to do a better job talking about these seams early on and who's taking what. And it's been reserves. Players like McGee, like Acevedo, coming in off the bench and making it happen. Morgan responding with the kill off the swing from Glover. Awalea in a good place to make this block. Those hands just not quite pressed over enough. A little bit too high. Morgan within three now. Fourth kill today from Glover. Back to serve Mackenzie Morris. On the slide, working well for the Minnesota offense. It's Awalea putting it down. Finally, Minnesota getting that middle at attack going just a little bit better. This has been a massive focus of this offense, getting middle involvement. The only times you can do that is on a good pass. Perfect time. Melanie Schaffmaster also incredibly dependable at the service line. Nice pass from Owabete, and that's the result. That's exactly what happens when you have a good pass. That allows all options on attack. And Oregon, in this 6-2 system, meaning they always have three attackers up front, they have three offensive options up front. Glover, a couple of kills recently, bringing Oregon within three. Purishai. Get that to fall, the point to the Ducks. Lauren Crow in for right side, Lydia Grote, who had been hitting negative up until that point, just trying to get a new look up there. But Lauren Crow has been great every time they stick her in a match. Versatile athletes, great defensively too, according to Cook. Hanson can't get that to fall. Another point for Oregon as they inch back to a one-point contest. Minnesota's got to stop the bleeding here, keep the ball in play. They had a good four-point lead on Oregon earlier in this set. They have to keep that. That's three attack errors. And that's what's going to happen with a free ball for the Ducks. And they've tied it up. Time out called by Minnesota. A 4 nothing run and in a hurry, Morgan has tied this up here, looking for an opportunity to take one on the road, playing strong here. Like for example, Oregon played Nebraska the other night, but they've had plenty of matches where they've had a top team come in and they've never had that kind of attendance. Collier couldn't put away the free ball, gets another swing. Hanson taking some heat off. Collier does not. Now we've got this back and forth battle happening. Collier in a difficult position to make a play on this. Better decision might have been just go right over the block into the middle of the court or take the setter out and right back. I got a piece of that ball, Emily, and my, my finger feels like it's ringing. <laughs> so you can imagine the. That was the type off of speed. speed. 
Think about taking one on your platform. You get bruised for days. They're tough out there. It's tough. Another kill for the Ducks. Collier back to serve. Goes right at Hansen. And look her back in. We haven't seen her since the second set. Was talking with the trainer. Bette, another swing into the block. Crow having to readjust. Right there, Shaftmaster with the dig. And Crow with the finish. Minnesota's finding ways to just better the ball and do something with nothing. Chaos is happening on their side. It's not an ideal situation. Body is all over the floor, but they're finding ways to just keep the ball in play. Engine having not seen Booker since the second set, she's now back in trying to stave off a sweep on their home court. They've lost just two times here at the path, including a couple nights ago against Washington, but then you have the Ducks still clicking. This is a must-win set for Minnesota. They are down 2-0 in this match. Backs against the wall. This is when you find out a lot about your team and their ability to push back. I think, Emily, it's important here, too, with about seven matches left of the season, you want to see that kind of fight, how that team responds in this situation. An ace for Oregon. It has been working in every facet of this game in their favor. And Oregon's doing such a nice job on the service line, really picking apart the passers on Minnesota's side, and this time in a two-passer rotation, so there are plenty of seams to hit. Another player off the bench, Bella Gamash, making it happen back-to-back, back, keeping it rolling for the Ducks. All of a sudden, Oregon back on top in this one. Kristen Klein doing such a nice job targeting the passers, not hitting the same seam back-to-back, back, really varying up where she's hitting it. Minnesota allowed 13 aces against Washington in their most recent match. That is going to help them out up the middle. A kill by Phoebe Awalea. A really good response for Minnesota. Nailing that pass, getting the middle involved, writing a little bit more balance to this offense. And now Shaftmaster is up front. She has to make sure she establishes herself, herself as a threat. Another minute with that kill coming off the bench in this match for Minnesota. Oregon, though, with the one-point lead. Big dig by Feebalt. And it looks like an injury. Sophie Gregoire is on the floor. And clearly in pain. Matt Olvar coming to offer support. And the Ducks regrouping on the side. Gregoire has been outstanding. Nine airless swings, seven kills. That's 775 for this team. Minneapolis. She's done a phenomenal job, and for this Oregon team, it is so difficult to see a teammate go down like that visibly in so much pain. It's a shock to your system as a, a teammate to try to reset when you know one of your players, one of your sisters, is hurting like that. It's going to be difficult for Oregon to try to bounce back from that, but they have to have a strong mentality and go out there and play for her. Coming up today, Heisman contender Dylan Gabriel leading the top-ranked Ducks against Maryland. The action kicks off at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. And, of course, throughout today, you can check out Big Ten Live with our pregame talent, Dave Rebson, Ashley Adamson, Anthony Heron, and Marcel Reese, breaking it all down, getting you all set for the number one Ducks here on Big Ten Networks. Both teams regrouping, looking to get back into play. One thing to think about, too, for Oregon, they already were out with Daly McClellan, so they've been going back to this 6-2. Now it's a question of, okay, you have one of your right sides down that wasn't used to getting playing time anyway. Do you go back to that 5-1 that you've been practicing all season? We'll see how Oregon comes out. It, it might be their best option rather than bringing someone off the bench who's cold to fill into a big role as another right side. Take a look at today's State of Success brought to you by State Farm. 
And Oregon, such an efficient team throughout this season. They're hitting in this match 326. Hasn't always been the case against top 15 opponents. And that's what happens when you play the best of them. It usually, you rise that competition. And tonight, Oregon just doing a phenomenal job offensively. Everything clicking. And now it's a question of can they continue that in a potentially new offensive system with the player that was lighting it up going down. And again, just mentally, you have to have that reset point of, okay, yes, we're shaken up, but we have to go out there and play. And after a really long break, too, you got to stay warm, get right back in it. Really difficult to do mentally, but you have to be mentally tough. And after that injury to Sophie Gregoire, back into it, Kate Feebolt, the former duck at the service line. Targeting Collier. Bette into the block. On the slide, Minity. And a point going to Minnesota with the net violation. Now Oregon does go back to that 5-1, so you'll see Kristen Klein, the setter number eight in yellow up front. And more options too for them to vary up the offense, maybe bring a Fabu on a slide as well. <laughs> Now just trying to figure out whatever combination they want in the backcourt as well. Isabel Patterson, new into the game for Oregon. Flying back set, there's that slide in Ofebu. That's exactly what Ofebu is so good at, but you don't oftentimes see that in a 6-2 system because you have an attacker there. But here in a 5-1, when you have the middle playing next to the setter, that allows for them to run on this slide behind them and that's one of Ofebu's most lethal swings. And even though they've been doing this 5-1 all season, still Oregon having to flip a switch here in a critical third set. Yeah, and they haven't been practicing it for the last few days as well, so it looks like it might take them a sec to get used to it, but that connection between Klein and Ofebu has been so good all season. No, no misbeats there. Another attack air by Minnesota, and Oregon will take a two-point lead. Klein strong at the service line. There's an ace. Six aces for the Ducks. And Oregon finding ways to turn it on again, watching their teammate go down, but they have not missed a beat out there. Flying targeting Palaviak. Acevedo into the triple block. What can you do? when you have that in front of you. It is so difficult to go up against the wall that is Oregon and their triple block up front when they're out of system. Minnesota has to make those adjustments just like they did in the second set and swing a lot higher. Has Oregon been able to read where the ball is going against Minnesota? Because it seems like they've been able to commit their block each time. So normally with that triple block, it only happens in situations out of system, meaning the setter's so far off the net that their only option is going outside. So they bring the other outside attacker in to block and help. Then you put up three blockers, and as an op opposing, get your butts out there earlier if you want better seats. On the slide, it is Minity. Minnesota right back to it, trying to stay alive here in this match. Pacro Collier will sky and fire. All of a sudden, Oregon has flipped a switch. They've done such a good job in the second half of this set, getting that offense to click a little bit better and keeping the ball in play. Oregon has looked completely unfazed in this match and dictating every part of it. And Hooker back in, goes into the net. Another point for Oregon. The roll continues now 6 nothing. the run. This even after seeing a teammate leave the match with an injury, Sophie Gregoire. Not too long, Minnesota with the points. Alex Acevedo checking in from Minnesota, and she was critical for this team, making it a back and forth third set with her work at the service line. Over by Ofebu. Oh was denied once, this time tries to go high hands. Oh, Obete on fire, but that just will miss Point Minnesota. 
Obete trying to go for those fingertips. It's a good shot, just barely missed on the execution. A little bit too high on it. Trying to swing for fingertips, just missing a little long. Again, targeting Obete. Julia Hansen with the solo denial, but kept up by the Ducks. One more time through the seam, and she terminates. This is where Minnesota has to continue to take big swing after big swing. They're not going to come back in this match by tipping the outsides, and everyone else have to continue to unload on these balls. Acevedo, an important run here for Minnesota. Another big swing from Hansen, and that's what you're gonna get anytime she's out on the court. All of a sudden, Minnesota's got a lot more momentum. 3-0 scoring run right now, 4-0 rather, chipping away at that lead, trying to get themselves back in this match in a must-win set. But her really well, now she's trying to get them back in it to finish. A 4-0 run for Minnesota. Acevedo with the service line, causing problems. Alabete with the kill, despite the effort from Zaina Palaviak. Still has a smile on her face, even though she crashes into a chair and maybe some memes. I don't think I've ever seen her not have a smile no. on her face. And even in a situation like this, she goes for the kick save out to the chairs and kind of gets tangled up in it. But again, she's always got that big smile. <laughs> Uplifting, positive, always that kind of presence. Shaftmaster, but picked up by Klein. Hansen unloading there. Lover absorbing the heat as Palabiak into her chest. Hansen into the block. Julia Hansen has been the difference maker for Minnesota. She's taking the big swings when it matters most. This is a player that is going for the kill shot. She becomes the go-to late in sets, and Minnesota is going to look to continue to go to her. 16 kills, the next highest for Minnesota is Wooker with five, so she has handled a significant load offensively. Alea can't put it down, and somehow the ball is kept up. Glover into that block to perfection. This is when the defensive intensity also picks up on both sides. Oregon trying to finish this one. Minnesota trying to claw their way back. No ball is going to hit the floor without a body next to it. Oregon has looked hungry from start to this point, coming off the wrong end of a sweep against Nebraska on their home courts. And looking to finish the job, leading by three. Not before Hansen tools it off the block. Hansen coming up big again, taking the big swings in the big moment. She is the definition of clutch. And that is such an impressive jump for Hansen. When you go from just a situational back row player to now leading your teams in kills and having the fearlessness to take that swing. Glover has been the go-to, and for good reason for the Ducks, another kill. All of a sudden, Oregon inching closer and closer to a top 15 sweep. This is where Minnesota has to turn it on and play as clean as possible from here on out to catch up. Isabel Patterson to serve, coming into the first time in this third set. Hansen, not a lot of space, but she makes something of it. Now, even with Hansen going to the back court right now, expect Melanie Schaffmaster, the setter, to keep her involved in the offense because she is the hot hand. And late in sets, that's exactly who you need to get the ball to. And someone Keegan Cook definitely trusts hitting from the back row. Line, look at the call here. That's sent back. Oh, a bete with a lot of heat. Crowl also denied. Savito seeing a lot of sets here in set three. Crowl another swing. And still the defense coming up with it. 
but Oregon is going to come up with the point there with the awkward contact. Oregon's block is so good. Four different times during that rally alone did the ball come back on Minnesota's side. Minnesota's trying to cover all they can, but Oregon is stifling up front. Nothing's getting through them. And these aren't just blocks from Oregon. They're blocks that feel like they echo. They yeah. reverberate on the other side. Vito tries to go over the block, too long, no touch, and Oregon inching closer to match points. Lydia Grote checking back in for the redshirt freshman, Acevedo, who performed admirably here, especially at the service line in set three. for Oregon to bounce back after Sophie Gregoire came down, and that tells you just how tough this Oregon team is. Also withstanding every Minnesota run to this point. Groats gets a piece, keeping Minnesota alive. They're within four. Throat checking back in and making a difference for Minnesota, trying to chip away at that lead. Again, big swings are going to have to get it done. Zaina Polabiak, the first full season as a regular player, taken over for Kylie Moore. And serves up an ace and a fist pump to go with it. All of a sudden, that door is cracked open from Minnesota, starting with service pressure. Polabiak putting in a bullet from the end line. It's always fun to see when those international players who did not serve at her position growing up have the confidence to go out and do that at this level. Klein looks cross court to Abete, but a whistle is going to give Oregon the point and the match. A convincing start to finish win for the Ducks on the road. We did not expect this. I don't know if volleyball fans expected a sweep this strong by Oregon. Their first time. Big props to Danny Douglas working today directing for the first time. I'm Shane Sparks. Volleyball is coming up next. Let's get down to Sloan Mart and Emily Eman in Minneapolis. Hello. 
Playing a lot of the gunner. 